Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me here. Um, thank you for attending. Uh, as you heard, I uh, work out of Microsoft's head office in Redmond um, and of the chief technology officer of our services business. And I travel around the world a lot uh, looking at what customers are doing, what partners are doing, um, how our business should be changing. And so an event like this is always interesting for me to sort of get feedback from you about what you're hearing, what we're doing, are we doing the right things, are we satisfying your needs? And so what I'll try and talk about today is what we've called communication and collaboration uh, and the next wave, and what I'll, really in two parts. Part of it I'll try and cover where um, we are as a company, what our strategy is, the breadth of technologies that we've got, and then when I'm done with that, we'll get into a little bit more of a deeper piece which is around in the e-marketing um, area, what are the technologies that we're looking at, what are some of the strategies, what are some of the visions that we've got, and then what are some of the more tactical pieces that uh, you can do today. So the place then to start is to actually sit back a little bit and think about some of the changes that we've seen in technologies to some degree over the last 20 years, where we've seen these changes occurring really in three big areas. The first one is in the PC, from the original PC from IBM, to the netbooks of today, and the touch panels that we'll see in the future. The second area is that of the phone, and what's happened in the phone, where the view has just changed so dramatically and so quickly about what is on a phone today. Today's phone, and we announced, uh, Microsoft announced the, uh, sort of our new software for the phones yesterday morning, but what you get on a phone today is what you had on a laptop about three or four years ago in terms of display, in terms of resolution, storage, communication. And so it is the phone that's moving very, very quickly. But there's another area that's driving a lot of the technology changes again, and that's on the television. Because we're seeing television go from analog devices to digital devices to connected devices to wireless devices to on-demand um, and that domain is changing faster than cell phones were changing. And so the strategy that we've got as a company is looking at these three screens and how these three screens tie together and what your experiences are across those three screens. It's what you're trying to do on those three screens and you want to be able to access and share and collaborate on your phone as much as you do on your PC. And as we're seeing changing in the home, the home television set is becoming that portal. And there's a fundamental change that's happening in the economics of computers today. And the economics are not no longer being driven by the electronics of the device, by the display size of the device. The economics today are really being driven by the ability of the user to collaborate and to communicate. So today we see telcos and cell phone carriers giving away a netbook. A netbook costs about depending on what country you're in, about three or $400, maybe a little bit more. But we're seeing telcos give you a netbook when you sign up for a 3G account. And so the value of that technology is really moving beyond the technology and the underlying components and much more to what you can do with it. And the business models are going to change very rapidly around the pieces that you are, the devices you carry with you, where you can work, and how quickly you can respond to dynamic changes. We're trying to address this in really two distinct pieces. The first one is in the data center and what we're doing in the data center, whether it's your data center or all the way through the cloud. And then some more interesting work that's going on around user-centric computing, which is what does the computing mean to me as an individual? How do I interact with these three screens? How do I behave with them? How do I get to my information? And how can I change? So let's take a quick look at some of those things. Here you're seeing the user-centric computing. Again, in this case, I'm thinking about collaboration, which is around mail, around document sharing, about an analytics, about being able to communicate and collaborate fairly quickly, and how that maps to those three devices and the cloud, to the three screens in the cloud. So if you look at the investments that we're making, the investments cover a broad series of devices, from PCs through servers, through handheld, through pocket devices, through cameras, um, through the ability to navigate and share and communicate, all the way through 
some very interesting and different ways that we see people reacting with the computing surfaces that exist around them. So let's look at a couple of examples of that. Um, this is from Xbox. This is the Xbox Live interface that you get where you sign on to Xbox Live. You pick an avatar. You decide who you want to be inside of Xbox Live. You decide what clothes you want to wear. You decide what color your hair is going to be. You decide what kind of personality you want to have as an avatar. Now inside of Xbox Live, this is pretty interesting, Xbox Live today has over 20 million people active every day inside of Xbox Live. Xbox Live is actually the largest television network uh, as a cable network today in terms of number of houses and numbers of end users. But we've learned a lot more than just cute avatars uh, and what they can do in that environment. What we've learned about fairly dramatically in the Xbox Live environment is how people are learning to communicate and to collaborate with each other rather than sitting on a piece of email or a piece of SMS and typing we are learning about how people can interact socially with one another in a virtual environment. So that's the sort of first part of user experiences that we're investigating. There's another interesting project which you'll see here, which is a project, again, out of the Xbox team called Project Natal. And Project Natal is about how you as a user interact with a gaming system without any controllers. It's about stereo cameras who look at you, who can see when you make a gesture like this, or in this game that you see, it's a game called Ricochet. Um, this lady is standing in open space and she's actually playing in a football game. Webit e Business e Internet Marketing Expo.